So I've been a Mad Lib fan for the last 21 years. And it's funny to think about this because I probably wouldn't have heard of him if not for the Tony Hawk video games, specifically Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, which featured his group loop packs when I'm on the mic from the 1999 album Sound Pieces. 2002 was a very pivotal year for me. It was the year I first heard Mad Lib, started junior high, flip skateboards, dropped sorry, and I learned how to do kick flips and heel flips. But 2001 was even more pivotal, far more significant. Not only for myself, but for Mad Lib, for you watching this video, and for pretty much everybody in the world. It was that year Mad Lib would release an album that tends to get overlooked even by more seasoned Mad Lib fans, and for four particular reasons. Reason number one, Mad Lib has had an illustrious career, and the man has been a part of some of the most amazing albums in hip hop and in music in general. Reason number two, he didn't release this album under the name Mad Lib. Reason number three, it came out the exact same day as Jay-Z's The Blueprint. The day after the 9-11 attacks, MTV ran nothing but music videos around the clock. The channel's way of providing the traumatized youth with some degree of normality in the midst of chaos. And I should know because I was one of those traumatized youth. Being so young, I couldn't process the event in a mature manner, so I had to escape reality through childish things like watching music videos and skateboarding and playing video games and listening to the radio and pretty much anything to stave off that feeling of existential dread i'm sure we all felt in 2000 madly was feeling the sense of dread himself although his was a creative artistic one the oxnard beat maker was growing bored with rap music and after releasing the left field hip hop underground classic The Unseen under the pseudonym Quasimodo, he was looking for what I can only assume was a new way to challenge himself. Being a big jazz head, Mad Lib set his sights on creating music within the genre. He was signed to Stone Throw Records at the time, an independent hip hop label founded by DJ producer Peanut Butter Wolf. And like any other independent music label, they usually had more talent on hand than money. But because Wolf was such a diehard fan of Mad Lib's music, when Mad Lib approached Wolf with the idea of making a straight up jazz album, Wolf didn't hesitate to use his own money to finance Mad Lib's dream project, buying him an assortment of instruments to mess around with in the studio. And when Mad Lib suggested making the album under yet another pseudonym, Yesterday's New Quintet, Wolf was even more supportive. Angles Without Edges would be the first of several albums released under the YIQ name and lead to several spin-off projects, each one being attributed to one of the five members of the group. The album sees Mad Lib mostly veer away from using samples, instead choosing to play live instruments. The producer known for sampling jazz musicians was becoming a jazz musician himself, playing with no formal training, mind you, although you probably wouldn't be able to tell by how fluid the music flows throughout the album. Songs like the Afrobeats inspired Papa and even his rendition of Ramps Daylight show Mad Lib's ability to draw sonic influence from multiple genres and combine them in a way that can best be described as easy listening. There's no need to rely on proper form when you're building a skyscraper of your fantasies. An album's title is almost as important as the music itself. The blueprint was Jay-Z's declaration of rap that he was this new grand architect. The artist once known as Jazzo's little homie that rapped like DOS effects was basically destroying that old image and rebuilding it into the pop culture juggernaut he would soon become. He gave the world the instructions on how he would do this. The blueprint gives us one of the best summertime jams, one of the best diss tracks, one of the best love songs, and introduced us to a young beat maker out of Chicago that would become infamous. All of this in just one album. Angles Without Edges says a lot about Mad Lib's mentality going into his creation. If Jay-Z was playing for keeps, then Mad Lib was playing for kicks, no longer confining himself to the box of hip-hop producer. Sure, he made hip-hop music, but not strictly hip-hop. This is the same man with a vinyl collection that might really just weigh a ton. He's no longer approaching the art of creating music from a linear perspective but instead attacking it from various angles and he's bold enough and creative enough to know when to step outside the lines or in this case step outside the edges the album is creative in its execution yet also destructive in its intent mad lib approaches music the way a child makes art and children are brave when it comes to creativity and in this one album we get to see the biggest creative leap in mad lib's evolution as a musician 
There are still hip hop elements sprinkled throughout the album, but there are also elements of funk, psychedelic rock, and even a bit of bossa nova. If it weren't for this album allowing Madlib to break his own artistic barriers, we might not have gotten the sonically bizarre album Mad Villainy a few years later, and we definitely wouldn't have gotten the incredibly worldly and diverse beat conductor instrumental series. Madlib puts out music like a mad man, with no real regard for perfection. Cause like a child, it's okay if you color outside the edges. You're just making shit. Not because you have to, but because you want to. Not to be the best to ever do it, but simply to just do it. The value of the art isn't in the dollar amount, it's in the fact that you made it. But how does Angles relate to September 11th, other than the fact that it was released on that date? The comparison may seem superficial, but there is another layer to it. There's a dark humor that encompasses the album when you view it in the context of the state of the world at that exact time in history. The contrast between the album's breezy California dream and jazzy soundscape and the atmosphere of the day are jarring to say the least. Angles, much like the vaporwave genre that would be created nearly a decade later, feeds off the nostalgia of a pre-9-11 America. The world as we knew it before September 11, 8.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time the world where Madly would create an entire band in his head. Even the band's name sounds like a tongue-in-cheek joke. Yesterday's new quintet pokes fun at the notion that the very moment a collective of musicians come together, the mere act immediately sets off a ticking time bomb, counting down the very seconds until their inevitable destruction. Also, jazz is one of the most recognizable forms of American music known across the world, maybe second only to hip-hop. But still, is recognized as being distinctly American. The U.S. is synonymous with the concept of freedom, whatever that may mean to you. The freedom to live the life that you want to. The freedom to build the life that you want to. The freedom to create the art that you want to, on your terms. The same way hip-hop would evolve over the course of its lifetime to become more experimental, jazz shares a similar trajectory. Both disciplines place more emphasis on originality versus form and structure. Angles Without Edges is a smile lip stepping into a brave new world, although one of his own making. The listener is clearly in his head, but this new world is also derivative. It's not hard to tell which artists influenced Madlib's creative choice throughout the album. Like there's a very obvious sunrise inspiration, especially in the latter moments of the album's final track, Last Day. It's a 55 second chaotic class of random instruments and noises that sound like a 20 car pile up or even a large building coming crashing to the ground. Tuesday, September 11, 2001 was the last day for everyone, metaphorically for most, but literally for over 2,000 poor souls. The world we knew Monday, September 10, 2001 would come to an end, but we wouldn't notice until September 11. But by then, the old world was yesterday's news. See, humans are builders by nature. Humans are creative by nature. What we build and create can always be destroyed, whether intentionally or unintentionally. But what gets destroyed can be built back, bigger, better, and stronger for the future. I think one of the best things about America is that it provides artists like Mad Lib with the opportunity to make unique art like angles without edges for a living. Art that they truly love. Art that they truly believe in art that we can appreciate, art that can help us process the world around us and heal. If you appreciate Mad Lib like I do, or if there's an artist whose music has helped you get through some dark times, drop the name in the comments below and tell me what they mean to you. Thanks for watching.